is in Black Caribbean culture. Last year's celebrations told us that had its place. I was personally looking forward to the women's gathering that was planned by Linda Meinsner, sipping cocktails and trying to think in a woman's only space. I think all the girls were looking forward to that. People were dusting off their sneakers to get ready for sports day that was being organized by Mary Ellen Jackson. A chance for everybody to relive their teen years. A time that was so messed up for so many in the queer, in the queer community as we found our identity. But, similar to the rest of Bermuda, COVID-19 has been a source of tremendous disruption and disappointment for Bermuda Pride. We watched early on as Pride public celebrations were canceled around the globe. There have been real limits put on us as to what we can do, and we in Bermuda Pride stand by efforts to keep our people safe. But, despite that disruption and disappointment, we couldn't let August 8th pass without doing something to recognize Pride. We picked up our socks and we followed the rules. Last year when we said we belong, we did it to bring recognition to systematic and structural forces that had sought to exclude lesbian, gay, bisexual, transsexual, queer, intersex people from all the rights of citizenship. The whole island was literally blown away by the level of support that was shown, particularly by the thousands of people who marched the streets of Hamilton with us. The community stood with us. Although the issues have not gone away, this year the message of we belong is different. It's here, it's the same, but it's different. The flip side of rights of citizenship that we sought last year are obligations of citizenship. And that's what we are choosing to identify with this year. Last year, our friends in the hotel industry stood with us in solidarity under the banner of we belong as we asserted our right to be here. Less than 12 months later, many of those same friends found themselves out of work as a result of COVID-19. We felt compelled to act. With the help and approval of our sponsors, we were able to come together and make a $26,000 financial contribution to local hotel workers with limited income because of the virus to hopefully make their lives a little bit easier. Also, like many in our community, including the churches, we stood shoulder to shoulder to march for our own Black Lives Matter march. We stand with the community. It's not just the community standing with us. We belong is as much about acceptance as it is about our being in our community, making a positive difference, improving the lives of all our people, and in the immortal words of John Lewis, to make good trouble when necessary. Ecclesiastes says, to everything there is a season, and that includes, at verses four and five, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones together, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing. For us, Pride has always been more than a party anyway. This particular season, it is particularly true. COVID-19 has pulled the veil back and revealed the unsustainability of everyday life for so many in Bermuda. And as we think about the deaths in the United States and the Black Lives Pro Matter protests everywhere, we want to reflect personally and as a community on making positive change because of that fact that we belong. We chose the date of August the 8th to celebrate Pride in 2020 because it is the seventh anniversary of the amendment to the Human Rights Act in which we added two words in a comma, sexual orientation. So, we couldn't think of anybody better tonight to speak than Lisa Reed, who is the Executive Officer of the Human Rights Commission and she's going to give some of her reflections as the leader of that entity responsible for educating human rights and leading the charge against discrimination in Bermuda. We've also invited Adrian Hartnett Beasley and he will speak after Lisa. Adrian is the co-chair of Out Bermuda 
and that's the island's only LGBTQI plus charity that's engaged in advocacy and education. Our Bermuda also is the lead sponsor of Bermuda Pride, and for that we thank them very much. We'd also be remiss if we did not also create space tonight for reflection at this critical time on race within the context of sexuality and gender identity. Linda Meinzer, a fierce and vocal advocate and trade unionist, will come to the podium after Adrian to offer reflections on behalf of CURB. Pride this year looks very different. I guess we could call it pandemic pride. While the theme, as Liz said, we belong, it may sound the same as last year, the message it conveys this year is different. Bermuda belongs to LGBTQI plus people, just like it belongs to everyone else. That much is clear. We made that clear last year. Bermuda stood with us, and now, Bermuda, we stand with you. For the work of the Commission, 
human rights represent a host of distinct, complex, and intersected issues. Many of us live at the intersection of these issues and identities. We know firsthand that the interplay of power and oppression does not strike us all equally, and not all remedies are just and accessible. This year's pride falls as the, as the world is in the grip of a global pandemic which has illuminated the stark inequities we have allowed in this, in this community. The suspension of so-called normal life has forced us to face the reality of the privilege and marginalization that surrounds us. Most significantly for Bermuda, the Black Lives Matter movement in the United States has served as a catalyst to face our own racial justice reckoning. The systemic implementation of racism was central to Bermuda's founding, so it necessarily follows that the pursuit of its dismantling is central to our future. Activism, often maligned as something reserved for hippie do-gooders or so-called troublemakers, is being recognized as an essential duty of our shared humanity. The Commission is grateful to the Pride Committee for the invitation to reflect and to remember that the pathway to change is never linear. The arc of social change and transformation is barbed and uncertain, but essential to realizing a just future for all. The jubilation of last year's inaugural Pride event will never be forgotten. And yet, despite the vastly different circumstances, 2020 may prove to be an even more memorable occasion. To borrow the sentiment of activist and author, Afula Hirsch, while we rally and continue the necessary work that lies ahead, let us feel the wild relief in being a part of a world that is finally shredding its complacency. Thank you. Good evening, and thank you for inviting Out Bermuda to be a part of this year's moment of reflection on Pride 2020. We are once again honored and pleased to serve and support our community. A year ago, as we celebrated Bermuda's first ever Pride Parade, we marveled at the level of support and the sense of community that was shown for the LGBTQI plus community in Bermuda. In these last few months, we have seen the island pull together in unprecedented ways. In the truly humbling sight of 7,000 people marching in solidarity with Black Lives Matter, and also as Bermuda continues to face the economic blowback from COVID-19 shutdowns. The pandemic and subsequent economic crisis has had a disproportionate effect on LGBTQI plus communities around the world, including queer youth forced to quarantine with abusive or unsupported family members. I want to offer support to anyone who has been forced to stay put in an unsafe place or to seek refuge outside their homes or even off the island. We want you to know that you are not alone. As Bermuda's only LGBTQI plus charity, Out Bermuda is proud to be working with the Family Center and the Center Against Abuse to collaborate on ways to ensure that the great teams that deliver services provided by those charities have access to LGBTQI plus training and development. Our community is not spared the hardships of difficult family situations or sexual abuse or other violence. 
It is important that you know that these services are available to you and that safe spaces are being created all around us. We are also thinking of the members of our LGBTQI plus community and allies finding themselves home from school or university indefinitely or unable to travel. For many of us, it was years spent studying, living, living, or just traveling overseas that allowed us to broaden our worldview and have our ideas challenged. It may seem difficult, but you can still learn and grow from home. We encourage you to reach out to others in our community, whether on the island or online. Al Bermuda also wants to thank our LGBTQI plus siblings who have spent the last few months as members of the essential and frontline workforce, keeping us safe and our country running during these strange and uncertain times. And for those eager to get back to work in the hospitality industry and elsewhere, we see you and we support you. The theme of Pride last year was, we belong. Whether boldly proclaiming our identities in the streets or whether quietly going about our lives, that still rings true. So let today be a reminder for all of Bermuda that the LGBTQI plus community is right there with you. We are looking after loved ones, responsibly wearing our masks and watching the testing numbers as they are released, just like everyone else. Like you, we are out exploring the lesser known beaches and shopping locally. In this global pandemic, we really are in this together. We set it last year to mark Bermuda's first Pride celebration, and it bears repeating. As the song says, Pride is about a deeper love for oneself and one's identity and for the whole community. Happy Pride, Bermuda. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Almost sounds like I'm here by myself. <laughs> I'm gonna say it again. Good evening. Good evening. All right. That sounds better. When I found out that I was graciously chosen to give a speech on behalf of Curb, I spent days trying to figure out what I was gonna say. And then I realized something very important. I want you to take a look at my t-shirt. I know you probably can't see it too well down there. But at the top of my t-shirt, it says black and a tick. In the middle, it says gay and a tick. After that, it says woman and a tick. And at the very bottom, it talks about my life. It says, unapologetic. Yes. Yes. As a black, yes, clap that. Yes. As a black gay woman in this country, I don't have to write, Google, or research intersectionality. I live it. I live it every single day. I know what racism looks like. I know what it is to be discriminated and disenfranchised because of the color of my skin. I know what it feels like every day to be disenfranchised because of my sexual orientation. And I understand very clearly what it feels like to be disenfranchised because I'm a woman. And many of you feel the same thing, but don't feel comfortable or brave enough to bring your whole self wherever you go. And the reason why you don't feel comfortable or brave enough is because the circles that we have in this country have let us down. Thank you. 
They have let us down. They say only bring parts of yourself into our circle. Sometimes the LGBT community has let me down by only making me feel comfortable by bringing my gay self into the community. Sometimes the black community has let me down by saying only bring your black self into the community. Sometimes the male community of this country has let me down by saying, I'm not so sure we want you to bring your whole womanhood into our circles. And what I'm here to say to you tonight, on behalf of Kerr, is that we have work to do. It is time to stop cherry picking the wrong rights. It is time as black people to say that it's not just about racism. It is time for black people to say it's not just about racism. That we as black people will stand on the forefront for the rights of everybody. It is time as gay people to stop cherry picking around racism and say we believe Black Lives Matter. And it's time for feminists to stop being single focused and say Black Lives Matter and the LGBTQI community matters. We as individuals should not leave here tonight and don't carry with us the responsibility and the moral responsibility to talk about race in our circles, to talk about being gay in our circles, and to tell the wrong and say to our family members, say to our friends, say to our co-workers that I will stand up for equality and equity for all. And Kerr is so passionate about this that they have offered to put on a series of truth and reconciliation that deals with the connection between race and gender and orientation. And so I want all of you to commit to being a part of that series, to sign up for that series, and let's get around the table and have real conversations about race, real conversations around orientation, because guess what? You don't have to like me, but you better respect me because I'm not going anywhere. Neither is her, neither is the LGBT community. We are all in this together, and we need to start acting like it tonight. If you have a candle, I'm gonna invite you to light it now. If you don't have a candle, but you have a mobile phone with a cool function, which is a torch or a flashlight, you might wanna try that as well. We can't have pride and celebrate pride without reflecting on those who have gone before us. And so I wanna take this opportunity to remember the Ubi Mings of the world, or the Ubi Mings of Bermuda, and the rest of the Commonwealth Caribbean. And given where we are, particularly in relation to the conversations around the fact that Black Lives Matter and how Black Lives Matter, I also want to invite us to reflect on the lives of Nina Pop, Brianna Taylor, George Floyd, Ahmed Aubrey. So let's take this moment to reflect together in silence.
Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Happy Pride.
Well, they gave us 30 minutes, and uh, <laughs> we kind of kept our promise. Thanks for coming out. Happy Pride. See you in 2021. <laughs>